listening to the Giggly Yo Radio Show, where it's more talk and less music. <laughs> That's pretty weird. Oh, you're listening to the Giggly Yo Radio Show, when doing it together is better than doing it alone. What are they talking about? Giggly Yo Radio Show, with Brother Prince and Evangelist Deborah McIntyre. <laughs> are, are they married? <laughs> oh, look at them doing it together. Oh, oh, oh. Yo, um, thank you, thank you, Lil Creek. Welcome to the Equally Yoke Radio Show. I'm Brother Prince with the music, and in a few you'll be hearing from my lovely wife, Miss Evangelist Deborah McIntyre, with the word. But um, right now I'm gonna do a little more music and less of her talking. You know, <laughs> now nah, I'm kidding. She's not here, so I think I can get a little away, get away with a little more music this evening. But right now I'm gonna start it off with my little sister. I call her my little sister with the red hair, the songstress. The powerful voice, Miss Alexis Spike. She was BT's last year's second runner up. But I was speaking to her manager, Uncle G, and he said it is gonna be a lot of good things and it works for this young lady. And um, so I advise you guys to keep a look. But right now I'm gonna open up with Alexis Spike with a new single, y'all. Steady. Check it out.
marching on your way. I like to say this. God of mercy, Lord. God of mercy, Lord. Come on, sing it to me tonight. life over you today every person listening I want you to understand that no matter where you've been or where you might currently find yourself it's not over when God is in it there is no limit new breeze it's not over it's not finished it's not ending it's only the beginning it's only the beginning when God some friends along to just encourage you a little further. James Fortune. This help. is for someone right now. I know it's darkness. Yes. Just before dawn. It's not easy right now. This might be the hardest mm. season you experience. Oh, I've been there. We heard. But it won't last. Won't be too long. Won't be too because long. Because you are. Closer than you think you are. You may not see it yet. Come on, Israel. Oh, 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 look to the sky. Help is on the See, way. It's not over. It's not, over. It's not finished. It's not, finished. It's not the end yet. Your story's not over. This is only. It's only the beginning. He makes all the difference. He makes it. He makes all things new. Yes. With God. All things are new. All things are new. In the spirit, I sense something starting to move. Come on. Something is moving. Everything is turning around. Just getting better. Seasons are changing. Seasons are changing. Everything. Quieter days are here.
When God is in it, it's not over. When God is in it. Thank you for forgiving me over and over again. Yeah, I'm calling on you, Heavenly Father. I'm down on my knees. Say, I call on you no matter the hour. Lord, I'm in need. I've been messing up. Lost my house, done lost my job. Why walking out? These church folks say they my friends, but I'm all they talk about. I've been doing wrong, I'm so sorry. Lord, please forgive me. We confess to Him, He'll remove all wickedness. The blood from Your Son will wash me.
Dope Radio. Now here's a word from Evangelist Deborah McIntyre. Job 
interview for the second time. And I said, Lord, I don't want to go here again. And they want to interview me, ask me all these questions that they done asked me already. I don't want to do that. Now, I have the nerve and the audacity to tell him, if they do that, I'm going back home and I'm packing my bags. And Christmas, I will call New Jersey my home again. I had it all planned out. I had it in my mind. I was not going to tell Thomas. I wasn't going to tell Prince. I wasn't telling nobody. But it was already in my mind. I'm going home. And I walked into the place and the lady sat down in front of me and the, the, the man, the doctor came and he asked me one question. And I was able to answer that one question. He looked, he leaned on the door. He looked at the manager. He said, you want to do this? And I said, hey, what you want to do? Because you don't block the door. So I can't get out what you trying to do. She said, I simply want to offer you the job today. Oh Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I tell you that today I have been employed for over a month now? Hallelujah. Can I tell you that I love my job? Hallelujah. Can I tell you that God afforded me the opportunity that this time next year I have my license as an optician? Hallelujah. 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 So can I tell you to wait on you're coming out. I told y'all that before. You are one of those three places. Amen. And I can tell you that if you just hold on just a little while longer, you'll get through. Amen. Because it did not look good. It did, I'm going to tell you, it didn't even feel good. I wanted to back out. I wanted to give it all up. No, I was not leaving my marriage. I was leaving the place because the place was an uncomfortable place. Who wants to be uncomfortable? Amen. Nobody wants to be uncomfortable. And since we're speaking about the uncomfortable place, I want you to get your Bibles and travel with me to the book of Daniel. The book of Daniel. And now y'all will see that I have papers and books and stickies all over the place. Excuse me while I learn how God is going to deal with me. Amen. Stickies all over the place, but that's okay because I have what he wanted me to say. Amen. No matter what it's on, it don't even matter. As long as it transfers to your heart, I really don't care. Amen. And we're going to the third chapter of Daniel. I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet when you have it. In honor of God's word. And I'm just going to read a few verses. I'm going to skip around because really this whole third chapter, if you read it, it sums up the story of where we're about to go. So I'm going to need you to read that whole third chapter. But I'm going to skip around, okay? And I'm going to start at the first verse. Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits and the breadth thereof six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent to gather together the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the, true, all the rulers of the province to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Then the princes, the governors, and captains, the judges, treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the province were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then and Herod cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, the psaltery, the dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king hath set up. And whosoever falleth not down and worship shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning fire. I'm going to skip down to verse number 12. 
There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. I'm going to skip over to 19. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, fury, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, Meshach, and Abednego, and to cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, and their hats, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, and the furnace exceeded hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fire down to 25 and this is our last verse he answered and said lo I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire and they have no hurt and the form of the fourth is like the son of God amen amen, amen. precious father in the name of Jesus we come Lord God to say thank you God thank you for this opportunity that you have given me Lord God to speak your word I got I ask Lord God now as I have studied myself to be approved Lord God I ask that you work in me Lord God let me decrease Lord God in your word perfect your word go forth Lord God in the name of Jesus I ask Lord God that every listening ear Lord God will receive your word they will hear and receive your word Lord God in the name of Jesus I pray and I thank you in Jesus name amen 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 amen, amen. Our subject for today is, I don't look like what I've been through. Amen. Amen. Y'all should be shouting right about now because I'm quite sure you don't look like what you've been through. Amen. We've been through some things in 2012. Amen. And we're still here in 2013. Some did not make it. Amen. Some did not cross over. But because you are here, can you just make a little bit of noise? Amen. People take it for granted, hallelujah. And I realized in the midst of my struggle and in the midst of my the same thing that I was going through, but she wasn't able to stand it. Then it realized, I realized and it dawned on me that is why I was going through because I needed to be strong enough to go back and tell somebody else. This young lady, I met her because Janai was having a little sleepover with her friends from school. And they came over and one of the parents came and he he brought her his daughter and we were talking. He just happened to say, well, call my wife. And I'm like, what am I going to call his wife for? I don't know her. But then he said some things. He said, she ain't doing nothing but sitting on the couch. She don't have no friends. She can't find no job. She's been looking for a job all this time. And I said, oh, that sounds like me. I've been through it already. And it just, it didn't come. It was no, no coincidence that it came at the time that it came because of the simple fact I had just went through it. I had just got my job. So I understood what she was feeling, how she was feeling. So I gave her a call. And can I tell you that today I speak to her almost every day? Every day. So I know that it was in alignment for me to call her because of what I had been through. Even though they didn't know that I've been through that because I didn't look like that. But I can tell you that I understood where she was at. And I understood that if I just call her and say, hey, I'm over here. I'm thinking about you. It's going to be okay. And she told me, she said, I'm so glad you called me. She said, because I was about to give it all up. I suffer from depression. I have this going on. I have that going on. I have that going on. And I said, Lord, thank you. Because you didn't, you didn't let me lose my mind in the midst of all of the stuff. Because it was crazy. It was a whirlwind. Hallelujah. And sometimes we go through a whole bunch of stuff. And it takes us to and fro. And we feel like we can't make it through. But if I can tell you to just hold on. Because you're not going through just for you. What you go through is not for you. Amen. Amen. I just want to tell you that I got to make sure that you know that one today. That what you're going through is not for you. Right. It's not for you. Right. It's for you to go back and witness to somebody else and to bring them to where you are. Amen. 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 Don't miss it because if you miss the, the message or the lesson and what you're going through, you're going to go through it again. And I know that I don't want to go back where I came from. Amen. I don't want to go back there. I don't want to go back there. So I'm glad that he was able to use me at that point in time. So the time that he wants to use you for is coming. If it had not already come. Amen. 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 We're in the book of Daniel. 
And the, the Daniel is the last of the five books of the major prophets in the Old Testament. Daniel, as the writer, was writing to the other captives in Babylon and to God's people everywhere. Now, I, when I did this, I looked at it and it says that he was writing to the other captives. Which lets me know that if he was writing to the other captives, at some point in time, he was a captive himself. Amen? And then he was writing to someone else to let them know. So again, it just solidifies the fact that what you're going through, whatever has you captive or whatever has had you captive, held you captive. And when you are free from it, you are obligated to go back and help somebody else. We're obligated. So don't ever think for one thing that you've gone through something, I done made it through, now you got to get through. And wrong answer. You got to go back and you got to help them through. I know it's aggravated. I know you don't want to do that, but you have to. This is your obligation. So you want to just put on this earth just to live a life and be, you know, free from all of the pain and the strife and all of the captivity and the bondage and just go on to heaven. That's not the purpose. The purpose was here to help somebody. Amen. He didn't only put help meets here for husbands and wives. He helped me. He put me here to help to help a pastor Mara get through some stuff. For her to help me get through some stuff. That's how it works. It works. All of us together. Amen. You can't do it by yourself. And they can't do it by themselves. Amen? Amen. Daniel wrote this book to give a historical account of the faithful Jews who lived in captivity and to show that God is in control. Daniel, a young man, was devoted to God. Although he held in captivity, he remained true to his faith. He remained true. Amen? And he was a man of prayer. See, he was, he was a man of prayer. That's what we have to do, of prayer. When things get thick and heavy, when they don't look right, we got to resort to prayer, amen? We resort a lot of times to trying to help and, and do it ourselves, but it just does not work that way, amen? It does not work like that. I can tell you that you can try to fix it on your own, but I guarantee you, you will mess it up. Yeah. Yeah. I've messed it up. I thought I had it together. I had it written down. I had it planned out. This is how we're going to do. Baby, we're going to the left, and that's going to be that. Duck. When that one comes, and you know what? Every time we don't went to the left, something slapped us. We ducked, and something kicked us. That ain't working no more. So we realized that we could not do it on our own, so we had to resort to the higher being, which is God. Amen? We had to get on our knees and pray. We had to pray when it got thick. Amen? We had to do that. We had to do that. So Daniel's story starts when he was a young boy. And in order for me to tell you and for you to get to chapter 3, to understand and to shout with me about their victory, you had to understand where Daniel was coming from. See, Daniel was chosen because he was, how can I say, he was, he was smart. See, what happened was Nebuchadnezzar became king. And you will find all of this in, in the, the first chapter. Nebuchadnezzar, he had became king and he had conquered the land of Jerusalem. And he went into Judah and into Judah he captured them. Amen. Judah means what? Praise. praise. So he went in and he stole their praise. Amen. He comes in, the enemy comes in and he takes our praise. And he holds our praise captive. And I looked at him and I said, oh my God. So he comes in and he takes our praise. But why does he take our praise? So Nebuchadnezzar, he went in and he captured them and he said to them, he said, I want you to take the children and whom is no blemish. Now when he said that, he meant that no physical ailments. I don't want anybody that got a limp. I don't want nobody to look like they can't make it through. I want somebody that look like they strong and they're mighty and they can get it through. They can get the fight on. That sounds like some of us, right? We're, we're healthy. Nothing is wrong with us. We got everything in the right place. Everything is going on. Our praise is together. We can fight the battle. We can stand up. And here comes the enemy choking our praise. So now we get into the church and we get into the sanctuary knowing that God is good and he is everlasting and he does all of this thing. He's the king of kings and he's the Lord of lords and we don't even want to raise our hands. Because the, the enemy has us captive. And he says, now, no blemish, but well favored and skillful and with all wisdom and cunning and knowledge and understanding science and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace. I want somebody that's worthy enough to stand in my palace. So now listen here. What I can tell you from that is that the enemy comes and he seeks to get you, to destroy you, but he wants to overtake you. He wants you to be on his side because remember, we're on the Lord's side, amen? amen? We're on the Lord's side. So now he's coming to see if he can bind up our praise and bind up 
our worship so that he can get us to go where he needs us to go. But he says this specifically that I don't want you to seek out anybody that got physical ailments and can't get the job done. Right, right. So that means that he sits and he looks at us and he sizes us up. And when he thinks that you got it going on, when he knows that everything is in order, then he come and he tacks. So I can tell you that the good side of that is if the enemy is attacking, you know that you got it going on. And now put your hands together and know that you got it going on. That is a short sign. Now I can tell you that if the enemy does not bother you, if he's not messing with you, if he's not throwing a monkey wrench in all of your plans, that's because he already got you. Yeah, that's good. He don't need to mess with you because you already a part of his camp. Yeah, yeah. So he said, I don't need to mess with them. Pastor Mara thinks she got going on. She get up and she prays and then she goes through all of the stuff that she goes through. She, she misses those fiery darts that I blow at her. Then she goes and she, she preaches a word. And then not only does she preach a word, she preaches with power and authority. She got some kind of nerve. She got it going on. Let's attack her. Stay tuned. More from Evangelist Deborah McIntyre. You're listening to Eagle Yoke Radio. You can follow us on Twitter at Equally Yoke Entertainment. You can join us on Facebook at Equally Yoke Entertainment. And you can listen live, continue to listen live at www.equallyyokeentertainment.com. Attention all government, all military, from E3 and up, G6 and up, military computer sales, they got the lowest prices, if you're looking for anything electronics, I'm talking about new iPads, MacBook Pros, gaming systems, from laptops to gaming desktops to smart TVs, military computer sales is the place to go y'all. Go to www.militarycomputersales.com or call 888-412-8715. Military Computer Sales. Helping the military get back on their feet if you have poor credit or no credit at all. Military Computer Sales. Lowest prices around. Now back to the music. Here's Greater Allen. Why don't you make some noise if you know that I you're this for greater this year? <laughs> I'm leaving the old past behind and I'm pressing for what's new. Said I'm looking, I'm looking for, greater. for greater. I'm praying, I'm praying every day for greater. For greater. I'm reaching for it. I'm reaching, I'm reaching for greater, y'all. For greater. And I'm believing, believing for greater. For greater. Greater power. Greater Greater faith, greater faith, for a greater harvest. Greater I'ma give him a praise, greater, praise. greater works, greater works. And greater favor, greater faith, for greater miracle. Greater I'm talking about greater. greater. I'm looking I'm yeah, for, greater. for greater. Every day I'm praying, I'm praying. for greater. For greater. I'm reaching. I'm Speak greater. I'm a new and 
There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain Woo! to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There is power. Come on. In the name of Jesus. Come on, you declare it. There is power.
Angeles, Deborah. going to tell them after he done captured them and after he done put them over on his side they tell him now to feed them how many of you know that they the saying that what's the saying that if you if you feed the child the child begins to look like you so this is what Nebuchadnezzar thought that if I fed them and if I nurtured them and if I give them all of the things to say and if I change their name amen that they will now become like me the devil is a liar. Amen. So what the enemy does, he sets out to get us. And when we look stronger, we look mighty to him. And he know that we can be of, of help to him on his side. Then he goes and he changes our name. Once he changes our name, he starts to feed us. With all of the dirty stuff. He feeds us with all of the gossip. He feeds us with all of the negativity. And then once he tries to get in. Then he knows he's got us. He says, now I'm going to do that for three years. He says, because I'm going to do that because I want them to become just like me. Amen? Amen. But somebody was smart in here. I give props to Daniel's parents. I don't know who they were, but I give props to them because Daniel was smart enough to know that says, uh, uh-uh. So he went over to one of the king's men. That put them, that were in charge of them. And he says, Can we just eat vegetables? I, I don't I don't really I don't really like what y'all eat. Can I just eat what I eat? And that's what we have to do. Even though we have some people surrounding us and they're eating different stuff, we have to know when to say that nah, nah, I'm gonna just I'm gonna stick to this. Yeah. And I'm gonna do this. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Because after a while they'll look at you and say, Hmm, Amen. she's surviving, he's surviving all of that. Maybe I'll eat that. So what he says is the, the king's uh, men, he says to them, he says, okay, he said, but you know I'm going to get in trouble for this. The king is going to take my head if I let you do this. But somehow he wound up letting them do it. He said for 10 days. Daniel said, that's all I need, just 10 days. He said, and then after the 10 days, bring me back. Bring us back and see who looks the, be who looks the best. Right. So he brought them back and he says that he couldn't really, he said he looked at them and the ones who ate pork, just vegetables looked better than the ones that were eating all of the stuff that the king had given. We look better, Amen. hallelujah, than the enemy's yeah. children. Amen? We look better. That's why they attack us. That's why they look funny. Yeah. That's why we are peculiar people. Yeah. If you wanted to know, that's why. Because you're eating the word of God. Amen? And they're eating all of the negative stuff. Amen? So he did that. And he looked at them and he said, okay, so I'm going to make those ones that look skinny. They don't look like they have it together. I'm going to make them eat the vegetables too. So now here he go. Daniel with his bad stuff done. Really, God done set it up so that now Daniel is able to change. Right. Can you change somebody? I know, that's right. Can you make a difference? Amen. Can you make a difference? Amen. If you cannot make a difference, can I tell you just get yourself together? Amen. Amen. Get yourself together and be able to change somebody, right? Amen. And then we go on to chapter 2. Because I can't tell the story and get to the chapter 3 without the chapter 1 and the 2. You will not understand it. It says in the second year, uh -huh, he, the, the, the king started dreaming dreams. In other words, one says that he started having nightmares. So he went to all of these people that he had working with them, the ones that could do the magic, the ones who said they could, they could do all of this stuff. Amen. The ones that were surrounded, the ones that was in his camp, his boys who had his back. He says, okay, I done had a dream, I done had a nightmare, and I want y'all to tell me what this means. They looked at him and said, king, well, what was the dream? In other words, they needed the king to tell them the dream so that they can interpret it. Really? So you do magic, and you can't tell me what I dreamed? You got this crystal ball that you can see in, but you can't tell me what I dreamed? Nebuchadnezzar was like, no, I'm not going to tell you. No, you're going to figure it out. And then by this time, he had got so frustrated and aggravated because I guess he said, well, I don't fed you all of this time. You don't roll with me. You was my road dog. You had my back. We done fought. We done did all of this stuff. And you don't know what I dreamed? How dare you? Oh, my God. So here it is. Here it is. God's still working. He's still moving. So I believe that Daniel was set up. Even though he felt like he had been taken out of his uncomfortable place, God 
put him exactly where he needed to be. So here it is, the king that did all of this stuff, and the king says, um, well, if you can't do this, I'm going to kill all of y'all. I'm wiping all of y'all out because simply I don't need you. If you can't, if you can't benefit me, I don't need you. That's what the enemy does to you. When he gets you on his side and he realizes that you're not buckling to what he says, if you're not doing or going to places he needs you to go, then he says, you know what, I'm going to cut them loose. I don't have need of them. They can't even do what I tell them to do. They don't walk with me all of this time and now they can't bow. They can't do what I ask them to do. I don't need them. And he shuts them off. He kills them. Now he didn't notice that he said I'm going to kill them. He's not going to let them go. He wasn't going to simply just let them go by and say, you know what, go find somebody else to grow with. No, it was simply the attitude that if I can't have you, nobody else can. That's what the enemy does. He says, if I can't get David, I'm going to kill you. It's simple as that because if I can't have you, that means that you're going on the Lord's side. No, I don't want that. I'm going to kill you. And he's going to do everything that he can to kill you. He's going to do everything he can to knock you out, to get you on your back, to get you down so he can put his feet on you. But how many know that if you serve a God, hallelujah, and you serve them with all of your heart, that he has, he got you protected, amen? That's for sure one person that got your back, amen? Amen. So he says... Then somehow the message got back to Daniel. Daniel said, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me go in here and speak to the king. I'm going into the king. He goes into the king. Now, I give him props because I don't think too many people would go up to the king because they were scared of him. They were scared of him. So Daniel says, well, I, I, you know, what's the harsh decision about? You know, and, and I'm bringing it to y'all today so that you can understand that. I think he went in there and was like, yo, what's up? But what is the problem? Why are we all going to get killed? Because they can't do your, their job. Because I'm, I'm, I want to know, if you can't do what you're supposed to, why well, I got to suffer for it? Right. Amen? So then you had that attitude. He said, well, give me some time. Give me a few days, and I'm going to go back. And he said, and I'll come back, and I, I'm going to interpret this dream for me. So he goes back, and he, he speaks to the Lord. He, again, gets into prayer. And he says, God, please, give me what this dream means so that I can go back to the king. So he, God gives it to him, and when, when God reveals the dream to Daniel, Daniel did nothing but praise him. He did nothing but praise him. Even though he had to go back and tell the enemy. He had to go back and tell the enemy what God said. Really? That's how that works? So you got to go back and tell the enemy what God says and trust and believe and stand there and know that God has still got your back. Amen? That he didn't set you up to be killed. Amen? But watch what he does. Amen? Because he's up to something. Amen? So he's up to something. So he goes back and he tells, tells Nebuchadnezzar the dream and he gives him all of this stuff. And he tells him what the thing, what it means and he says, uh, okay. Your God. Now, mind you, he still, after he done got the interpretation of the dream, he still had the nerve to say, your God. So, which means that at that particular time, he recognized what Daniel had said. He recognized that God had given him the answer, and it was clear to him. But he still recognized that God, his God, was still not his God. He did not take on, he didn't, he didn't take it, y'all. Y'all saw that? Your God. He said, your God. And he praised him for a little bit. And then, after he did that, he praised Daniel. And at this point in time, Daniel was promoted. Amen? Mm -hmm. Ah, the enemy promoted him. Yeah. But I don't think the enemy understood what he was really doing when he promoted him. Yeah. Amen? The enemy has promoted you because he's about, he about ready to kick you out anyway. Yeah. He says, I'm going to promote them. Mm -hmm. And because of his gift, he was put in a prominent place. Amen. So which lets me know that my gift that I have inside of me is going to lead me to a prominent place Amen. if I let God do it. Amen. Now, if I try to do it on my own, I'm going to still be standing and sitting in the same place. But if I let God do it and God work it out, he'll strategically put me in a prominent place where everybody can see me and I can see everybody. Amen? Amen? Amen. And then it won't be a pro it's not going to be a problem because my head is not going to be too big. Amen? That's right. That's right. Amen? Amen? So he puts Daniel in this prominent place. And after he puts Daniel in the prominent place, what I loved about this part is that Daniel did not forget about his friends. Of course. He didn't forget about his friends. He didn't forget about the boys that came along with him. He didn't forget about the people that were in the same situation as him. Because they all was held captive. 
captive. They all was taken. They all was exiled and snatched from their families and put into Babylon. Amen. They all were done that. So he looked at them and he says, um, I know you set me up, but I, I, got, I got three more boys that I need you to hook up. I got three more. He didn't say I just got one because he said oh, I'm not going to be too greedy because I want to make sure. Nah, they're going to look at me funny if I bring all these people. Uh-uh. So when he says he's going to take his three boys, I got three, and I need you to put them in place. So what the king did was because Daniel had asked, he set Daniel up, and then he gave the he made the three boys that was with him, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That's what their names were changed to. Amen? It was changed. The enemy had changed their names. So he took those three, and he says, okay, I want you to be assistants to Daniel. Okay. So then he sets them up. So after he told them that, he really still didn't realize what he had done. So he thought he was king and he had it all together and he was the bright and brilliant one. So we're seeing now that he wasn't as bright as he thought he was. God was still brighter, amen? God still had it all, con all under control, amen? So that takes us to the third chapter. After he had, after he had heard the dream, and he interpreted, the dream was interpreted to him. I think now Nebuchadnezzar goes and he wants to build what he thinks he sees. What he was told. Come on now. So he go and he builds this golden image and he just knew he had it all together. It, it, it tells you about how, you know, how it was, how it looked and all of this other stuff. And he says, now, I got it. Now, I got it. I got the key of how we're going to get this done. So when you're going to hear the music, he told them, he says, I want you to go back and I want you to tell the people when you hear the music, I want everybody to back. Okay. So when things seem to get a little bit funny in your life and um, things ain't going right and, and my boyfriend said he don't want to be bothered, my wife says she want to leave and the bills say um, you ain't got enough money to pay me, I want you to back. When it don't look like it's supposed to look and it gets tight and things get a little bit heavy, I want you to bow. I want you to give up. I want you to bow to me. Uh -huh. So they said, okay, I'll tell the people. He told the people and, and the music went off. Things went crazy. Everybody bowed except for those three boys. So I guess he says, uh, he goes back and he says, uh, King, there are uh, three men that didn't bow to your music. So them three men, they ain't budge. I done played the music, I done played it as loud as I can. They ain't moving. And I can almost imagine how the man felt telling the king that. Woo, what a powerful message from evangelist Deborah. But I'm sorry we couldn't give it to you all today. You got to stay tuned and tune in tomorrow. Woo! You don't look like what you've been through. That's a powerful word. But you got to stay tuned tomorrow and keep tuning in to Equally Yoke Radio Show. I'm your brother Prince. And before I close out, I do this every, at the end of all, all of our shows, I like to salute my brothers. So today I'm going to salute a few brothers. I'm going to salute my brothers, my pastor, Derek and Daryl Etienne. I mean, they wear a lot of hats. You're talking about good husbands, good fathers, good pastors, good musicians, good coaches in sports. And they still find time to serve God. And I also salute my big brother, David Gilmore out of Patterson, New Jersey, who, is, who should be the mayor of Patterson. You can follow him and save Patterson on Facebook and on Twitter. So I salute you, my brothers. Keep doing what God made you to do. And let's claim our place. God bless. Equally Yoke Radio Show. Good night.